Today, we are talking about tools that I use in my art business. Now, I've already done a video about the seven tools that I use most in my art business, and you should definitely watch that video. And that one focuses more on the business part of it, the emails, the website, the project management tools that I use. And those are all very important tools, so you should check those out. But today, in this video, I'm gonna be concentrating on the tools I use for the design side of things. So in my day-to-day -day operations as a professional service pattern designer, I have some tools and I want to talk about them. You are probably familiar with most of the tools I'm gonna to be talking about, but I wanted to walk you through my workflow and discuss some of the pros and cons of the things that I use day-to-day. The first tool I use when I start my design workflow is my iPad Pro. This is a 12.9 inch screen. It has 256 gigabytes of storage. I'm using a matte screen protector and an Apple Pencil along with the Procreate app. You can look at the description in this video for a link to my blog, which will have all of these products listed out as affiliate links. If you're interested in any of these products, please use my links. It would be so lovely if you choose them for your surface pattern design needs. I got this iPad in 2018. Um, it's got the Apple Pencil 1. I still have the Apple Pencil 1. Obviously, it's pretty old for a tech tool. We know that these things tend to be replaced more often, but it still works really well, so I'm hesitant to just upgrade for the sake of upgrading. When I was first considering getting an iPad, I had been hearing about how wonderful Procreate was and how great it was to be drawing on an iPad. And I was a little skeptical. I was worried that I was going to spend this money on a pretty expensive tech tool. And then it was just going to be gathering dust because you never really know what is going to work for your your day-to-day -day operations. Um, but I decided to take a chance and little did I know that it would be an amazing way to upgrade my workflow. I use it all the time now. It is my go-to sketchbook and I definitely use it for more than just sketching as well. The reason I love using this as my sketch pad is because I'm able to easily erase my sketches without getting eraser bits all over my couch. I love adjusting sizing and rotation of things that I'm drawing without having to redraw them. And I use the native brush in Procreate Pencil 6B. It's amazing. It's just like a real pencil. As far as accessories go for my iPad, the first thing I got was a matte screen protector. And like I said, these things will all be linked in the blog entry in the description below. But it is a screen protector that, first of all, obviously keeps your iPad safe from scratches, but also because it is matte, it makes it feel a little bit more like paper instead of that glassy, um, super, super slippery drag that an Apple Pencil might have on a regular iPad surface. By adding this matte screen protector, it feels a little bit more like paper. Because I still have the original Apple Pencil, I also purchased these little doohickeys, these little silicone bits to help with keeping all the pieces together when I needed to charge, but the new Apple Pencil doesn't need these. I also got a case at that time, but after five years, it has broken off, and now I have a little Amazon Basics stand for when I use my iPad to watch television. After I'm done drawing or creating on my iPad, I have to transfer my work to my PC computer, which I'll be talking about as my next steps of my workflow. And I use Dropbox in my day-to-day -day 
work. This was featured on my last tools. You need to back up your work, people. Dropbox is really useful for that. So when I transfer my work from my iPad, I either move it to Dropbox or Google Drive and upload it there so that I can use my files on my PC. So I'm about to dig into my desktop setup, um, but I wanted to know, is this helpful? Has this been useful so far? I want you to comment below and let me know. Also tell me in the comments if you're interested in a video about my content creation tools, like my microphone and, and light and software setup and all that kind of stuff. Let me know and I'd be happy to share some of that with you in a future video as well. Sometimes, depending on the client, I do some of my more finalized work in Procreate. You can check out this video that I did recently about my workflow in my freelance behind the scenes video, but I almost always finish up my designs on my desktop computer. As I mentioned, my desktop is a PC computer, which I know is surprising. We think of designers as Mac people, but I've always been a PC person for my design work. And I upgraded this computer last year. And when I did, I was looking for a gaming computer because gaming computers, I'm not a big tech person and I'm definitely not a gamer, but gaming computers have fast graphic cards. So, I ended up with an HP Pavilion gaming desktop, which has a terabyte of storage, a fast graphics card, and most importantly, 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is such an important thing when you're running a lot of graphics software like Photoshop and Illustrator. So when I first bought my iPad in 2018, it actually did more to revolutionize my workflow than just change the way I sketch. Because what happened was when I first started with this iPad, I was working on a Wacom Intuos tablet. So if you're not familiar, the Wacom Intuos is a tablet where you are drawing on the tablet, which is on your desktop, and then you're looking at the monitor in front of you. So there's a bit of a disconnect because you're not drawing directly where you're looking. It's something that it takes a little bit of a learning curve to learn if you've not done it before, but once you get used to it, it's totally doable. However, after moving to the iPad where I was able to draw directly where I was looking, I started to have a hard time switching between using the Intuos and using the iPad. It was then that I decided to invest in the Wacom Cintiq, which is a much larger operation. Obviously it depends on what size you get, but I chose the larger Cintiq and basically it is a monitor that you can draw on. So as you're seeing here, this is a monitor and a drawing tablet in one. So you are drawing directly on your screen, just like with the Apple Pencil. This particular make and model, as I said, I bought this in 2018. This is the Wacom Cintiq 22 HD. Check out the link in my description for all of these tools and where to purchase. I've linked to the most updated versions of all of my favorite tools to make it super easy for you. So as I'm designing, I am using Creative Cloud, which mostly I'm using Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator and Adobe Bridge. I have a video on the classic question that I get all the time. Do you need Illustrator in this industry? So you can check that video out for the answer to that question. But I personally use Photoshop and Illustrator for all my projects. Adobe Bridge is an unsung hero and it comes with your Adobe CC subscription. I have a class on this as well. I love it, but it is 
There are so many benefits to Adobe Bridge and it is the first program I open on my computer when I start it up. I don't open Illustrator first. I don't open my email first. I open my bridge because I need to be able to see and find my files easily. So I love Adobe Bridge. And of course, Adobe Illustrator for doing my design work. Now let's talk about some of the accessories I use in my art business. Printers. What you're seeing here is my laser printer. And I wanna talk about the difference between laser and inkjet printers. I used to have both as a working artist. Inkjet is incredible for getting really high quality art prints. So if you have an Etsy shop where you're selling your prints, you might need an inkjet. I used to use it for printing out artwork as well as printing out um, greeting cards that I would work on. And I even went so far as to have a large format inkjet printer, which was an Epson and I will link to it. It was really a good one. It was 13 by 19 inches so you could have bigger art prints and it was a lot of fun but I really didn't use it that often. And by the time I did use it, like every two months or something like that, maybe every three months, the inks would kind of be sort of dried out. I would need to clean the heads. I would need to do a lot of maintenance to get it up and working. And it just became more hassle because I didn't use it that often. A laser printer is really great for when you don't need perfect color and you just want to check the scale of something or print out client briefs or documents. This is a super quick way to print things. It comes out clean. And I have to say it can be frustrating to not have an inkjet printer anymore, but laser has served me really well. I currently have the HP LaserJet Pro M252DW wireless color printer, which is great for printing from my laptop and my phone as well. Um, it doesn't print cardstock, which is one drawback. It said that it did, but it doesn't as well as I would like. Um, but it has served me pretty well, and I do recommend it as a good sort of workhorse printer. Next up is my scanner. It's the Epson Perfection V39 Color Photo and Document Scanner. And again, check out the link in the description for links to all these products. I used to use this a lot when I had my old sketchbook. Obviously, now that I have my iPad, I can just transfer my sketches digitally. But I also use this scanner for handmade textures, ink splatters, etc. In the past, I've worked with clients who have sent me vintage fabrics that I've needed to scan. And while this is a relatively small scanner, it's 9 by 12. Um, there are large format scanners if you're doing a lot of heavy scanning, like if you have paintings that you need to scan in regularly. But for what I do, it's not that often that I use it and it's fine to make multiple scans per, per image um, because now Photoshop has an easy way to stitch together photos. So it's even easier than it used to be. And I've not needed anything extra. Finally, one of my most important accessories in my day-to-day -day art creation are my external hard drives. Yes, I use Dropbox and I highly recommend it, but I also have physical hard drives that I can back up my work with. When you're creating a lot of artwork, not only does it take up a lot of space on your computer and sometimes you need to move it anyways, but also it's really important to have multiple copies. Trust me, you do not want to fry your laptop or have some sort of accident where suddenly you don't have your work anymore. So external hard drives are key. So those are some of the day-to-day -day tools that I use for my design work. Something you may have noticed is missing is actual art supplies. <laughs> I haven't mentioned any watercolors, any gouache, any of those things. And the truth is that I have a whole closet full of watercolors, full of gouache, bristol boards, different types of brushes, pens, and I bring them out on occasion. 
Um, I do use them to create textures for my work to scan in. Sometimes I use them just for fun and creativity. But since I've gotten my iPad, so much of my work really is all digital. Um, there are so many different effects that you can make with your iPad to get those digital styles. When freelance clients used to ask me for more painterly work, um, I would be getting out my watercolors and I'm not a great watercolor artist. So I would be doing these things and then I'd kind of be scanning them in and changing them a lot in Photoshop. Um, but now I do a lot of that stuff on the iPad in Procreate. When I need a more textured feel, I'm using brushes from Bardo Brush, Abby Uproot, Lisa Glanz, and Retro Supply Co. Um, I could give you a more detailed video on some of those brushes if you're interested in that from me. And I definitely recommend you check out my video about my business tools because those are all super useful. Use all of those every day as well. So check that out. Be sure to check out the link below with resources that I have links to all of these items that I mentioned in this video and they are affiliate links. So if you decide that they are useful for you, I will get a little tiny something, um, a little bit of a commission, but honestly, um, these are just really valuable things. I, I wouldn't be recommending them if they weren't so useful. So check out that link in the description to get access to that below. I hope that this has been a useful tour through my art tools and gives you a little bit more of a peek into my job as a professional surface pattern designer.